Let everybody know that the meeting will be recorded and may be televised live. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Ms. Carsley, would you please lead us this evening? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Delegates and visitors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I would like to introduce Ava Bertino, who is the class president of grade eight. Uh, Ava, if you would be so kind to come up and sit right here, that would be great. She has a, a presentation along with her um, class offices of the eighth grade. As you know, the eighth grade now resides with the high school, eight through 12. This is our first year that we've actually assigned uh, class advisors with grade eight uh, in order to that will follow right through the whole high school cycle and so I believe that they are want to jump right on their fundraising efforts so I'll turn it over to um, yes Tina. we do um, by starting our fundraisers for this year we want to do um, a eighth grade Halloween dance for eighth grade and the reason why we want to do this dance is to fundraise for our Washington DC trip um, a lot of kids maybe can't afford or can't go to Washington DC that really deserve to go so we want to make sure that everybody who deserves to go can go because it's such an amazing experience to go to Washington DC and I think that every student who honestly deserves to go can go um, so we've worked out these um, details in the Halloween dance. Um, but first, I'd like to introduce my student council. Um, we have Matt Corielli, our vice president, um, Russell Nichols, our treasurer, Ali Farhani, our secretary, and Faith Hunt, our videographer. Um, back to the Halloween dance. Um, we, re we have a location already, um, the Winthrop Yacht Club. We plan to rent out the upstairs floor, <coughs> and uh, through parent donations, we are able to completely fund this room upstairs. Uh, the price is $150, which is a fundraiser price. Um, so yeah, that's how we're going to get that room. Um, we also have a DJ for our Halloween dance because we uh, really wanted to have a lot of music at the dance. So um, our DJ is uh, DJ Kurt Millar. Uh, we actually, um, Russell, if you wanted to explain the DJ. Um, um, my mom got the DJ for us for the dance because to start off our fundraiser, she wanted to give us something to start off the year with, so she donated the DJ for us. Um, we actually, um, we're so grateful for that also. And um, we want to include pizza and drinks and candy, of course, for our Halloween dance. Um, we plan to have the time for um, 7.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Um, or 10, depending on whatever's better for the students. Um, it's going to be held uh, October 30th, the day before Halloween, just so um, we didn't want to have it on Halloween because we know a lot of kids are busy trick-or-treating. Um, and also with the funds, uh, I'd like to call um, Russell Nichols our treasurer once again just to explain our funds because we actually got a really generous donation from his uncle's foundation, the Eleven Fund. Um, we have received a $400 donation from the Eleven Foundation in memory, in memory of Michael J. Mason who passed away in 2011. I requested the donation of $250 to $500 and they gave us $400 to spend on food, decorations, drinks, and other things that can make this a really awesome event. Right, and um, so those are our funds, but uh, the only thing is that those aren't physical funds yet. We're going to have to use our pre-ticket sale funds and other stuff to initially buy our products and stuff like that, and then in the end we would be, um, so we would give the money up front and they would um, just give us the money that we spend back because that's how their donation process works. Um, and also we plan to take pictures at the dance and uh, we're going to be selling these pictures for 
three dollars um, each in our videographer Faith. Do you want to explain more about the pictures at the dance? Um, we plan to be having a photo booth in the corner of the function room um, that I'm going to have a tripod that Ava's going to donate and my camera that I've had for about two years now and we're going to be taking pictures of group pictures or if someone just wants to have a picture with their best friend or um, anything like that. Um, it costs three dollars and then the weekend, over the weekend we would be printing out all the digital photos uh, at CVS and then bringing them to uh, the kids that got them in home run the next day. Right, so um, so we would print out the pictures and uh, whatever is left, uh, we would obviously subtract the amount that they have cost us and add on for our funds. The rest of the money goes to us. And so if there's anything um, else you guys like to know about the dance, I would love to hear it or any questions or concerns. I, I have um, two questions. Do you have chaperones? For the oh dance. yes, um, we plan to have a um, ten to one student to adult ratio. Um, for every ten students, there would be one adult uh, chaperone. So we already have some teachers who would like to chaperone, and all of our parents would be there also. And so we have a couple more um, actual student parent um, chaperones that would also like to chaperone. So I think we are um, all set on that. And my other question was, in your email, you had mentioned um, a police detail. Do you know yes. whether or not you need to have a police detail? Um, the Winthrop Yacht Club does not require a police <coughs> detail. For uh, We expect uh, at least 80 to 90 students out of the 8th grade to show up. Um, the Winthrop Yacht Club does not require one, but if the school does, we can um, definitely find a way to add that in. We, so. we do not have a policy with regard to okay. a police detail. So if the Winthrop Yacht Club doesn't require one, then I don't think we need one. Okay. Any other questions? I just want to make a comment on it. I, it's, it I, I didn't realize right off the bat again that it was for the Washington DC, which I think is uh, a phenomenal idea because we've been looking at uh, ideas in the past. And um, if this is going to help contribute to students being able to participate in Washington, then by all means, I think it's a great idea. Also, um, what is the ticket price? Oh, right. Um, so the tickets to get um, in, you can buy them at lunch or at the door. Um, we plan to print them out sometime this weekend and sell them um, next week. They are going to be $10. No. Okay. Same price for at the door and at lunch. Any other questions? Ms. Bertino, you impressed me. You did all of that without any notes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do it. Very creative idea. Thank you. Good luck. If, um, if nobody has any other questions, then I would um, at this time um, like to take a vote on this. Bef before we have a motion, however, I, we have a school department, a school committee policy that states that we, s we will allow for a Valentine's dance and a moving, um, an end of year dance. <coughs> and this would be an exception to that. Now, you could make an argument that it's not <coughs> going to be held at a school, um, so it really doesn't apply to the policy. But just to be sure that everything is okay, I'm going to ask the committee if they would um, vote to override the policy and approve the dance at, at the same time. That will require a 75% uh, vote. And um, how many members do we have here today? Five. Five members. Okay. So I'll go ahead, sir. I was going to make a motion, but go ahead. I'm making, make <laughs> I haven't made the motion yet. <laughs> I, don't, I, I get the feeling, Ms. Bertino, you're, you're going to have this dance. Um, <laughs> I make a motion that we override the school committee policy on the uh, number of dances for this one dance and that we approve the dance and the fundraising. President Pickle. Gill, seconds? Yes. Ms. Haynes, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Mr. Gill? 
Yes. Miss Sullivan. Yes. Miss Polino. Yes. Mr. Perrin. Yes. Mr. Scarborough. Yes. Hundred percent. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. You can. You're certainly more than welcome to stay, or you can go. <laughs> you might. You might want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next item is public comment. Do we have public comment? Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Next to the minutes from October sixth for approval. Bye, thank you. Bye. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. Motion from Ms. Sullivan. Second. I'll second it. Right here. I can still second it. Um, any questions or comments on the minutes? If not, we will take a vote. All in favor of passing the minutes, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Ms. Polino, President Gill and I abstain. Next item is the MCAS presentation from the Arthur T. Cummings School. I see that Mr. Herity and Mr. Curley are here. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, do you want to say anything before they speak? Or I do not need to. I will they have it under control. Mr. Herity? <coughs> Hi, thank you very much. First, I just want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak. This is my first year as the principal of the Arthur T. Cummings School, and it's truly a great honor so to be here tonight and to share with you uh, the results of the school and a lot of our initiatives that we have started to put in place to move our school forward. So I would like to invite Mr. Curley to take my seat here while I stand uh, at the uh, board and kind of go through this point by point. So the agenda for tonight is to do the data overview, talk about some of the key terms. I know that uh, the school committee has gone over many MCAS presentations, but I just want to you know, start from the beginning for any parents or uh, community members that are at home that want to just have a firm understanding of where some of the, the key terms are as we start to analyze this data. We'll talk about some significant findings with the data. We'll talk about areas targeted for improvement. We'll move into action steps for grades four and five, action steps for grades six and seven, and then we'll ramp it up with a quick conclusion. So data overview, each year the administration presents MCAS data from the previous testing period. This presentation will encompass data from the Arthur T. Cummings and the Winthrop Middle Schools. We're in a unique position this year based on the construction project and the merging of four schools into three schools. And so our data from last year was really aggregated into grades three through five and grades six through eight. And I thought that the easiest way to present that data, considering that we have the majority of those students in our school right now, would be to just present the results that way and really target um, our students that are in our current building when we refer to our action steps. Also, uh, Ms. Pearson, Ms. Pearson's here tonight and she's going to be doing a more thorough and depth analysis of grade three at a later date. So uh, you have that to look forward to as well. Um, so key terms, the median student growth percentile, or SGP. I put this first. This is, to me, something that's extremely important. When we talk about the SGP, that is a student's growth from year to year. So if a student had a, uh, you know, a 260 in sixth grade, then what is their growth going to be in seventh grade? And this number is really important because we're really focusing on all of our students when we talk about SGP. Um, and so if they had a 260 last year, all the students that had a 260 last year, it's going to compare them this year with what their score is. And if their score is greater, then they're going to have uh, an SGP probably higher than 50%. The Composite Performance Index, this is a CPI. This really talks about overall proficiency rates. So how many students you have that score proficient or advanced. The PPI, the Progress and Performance Index, the annual progress and performance index is uh, combines seven up to seven indicators for our grade level it's five indicators basically what this looks at it's a measure of the improvement that a group makes towards its own targets over a two-year period so the five indicators that we have in our school are uh, narrowing proficiency gaps in ela math and science and our growth in ela and math 
the cumulative PPI encompasses the last four years with rating the recent years as the most important. <coughs> and with your cumulative PPI, that is how your school is classified into the levels. The state of Massachusetts has five levels for school, one, one through five. The highest performing schools are level one schools. And uh, about 80% of schools in Massachusetts are rated as level two schools. And then schools um, in the lowest 20% as far as uh, proficiency levels and meeting the subgroup targets are rated either as three, four, and five, depending on what level of supports that they need. And a lot of that has to do with how many students are participating in MCAS, um, how the subgroups are doing, and so forth. And the state really targets those uh, level three, four, and five schools for additional supports from the state. For a school to be classified in the level one, which is where we want to be, the cumulative PPI for both the all students group <coughs> and the high need students must be at 75 or higher. So here's a rainbow chart, and this gives a really nice visual representation. I know these are difficult uh, to read if you're, if you're watching on TV, but I, I gave all of the school committee members a copy of the rainbow charts, and I think this is a very simple way to see where our schools are either meeting their gaps or, or not meeting their targets. And so when you look at uh, over the last four years, you can see that, you know, just looking at all of our students at the coming school in grades three through five, this year in 2014, we had no change in our CPI for ELA. We improved, but below target for our student growth percentile. And right here, this purple color, what you'll see there is if your school earned extra credit points. And so extra credit points, you either decreased the percentage of students that were in the warning category by a certain amount, or you increased the students in the advanced column. So what you can tell right away is we have some blue. So the areas that we have blue, that means that we're above target. So that, those are areas that we've really demonstrated some, some great progress, and that is in science and technology. And we also earned extra credit points this year in our number of students that moved into the advanced category in fifth grade science. So that's a big hats off to the teachers in fifth grade and the work that they've been doing. You can see that there's a dramatic increase from 2011 <coughs> to 2012. When I talked to the teachers about that and I said, why did we have such a big increase from 2011 to 2012? Well, we had curriculum textbooks that were delivered in 2012 that were aligned with our standards. So you can see what a dramatic increase having the right resource in a classroom can make for our teachers. Another key to this is uh, if you move to, you can move to the next slide, Mr. Curley. Um, this really tells where we're struggling too. Because if you look at the red in our science, that tells us that our low income students, because this chart represents our our low-income students at the Arthur T. Cummings School, and those students, like we talked about before, also need to be reaching the 75 PPI to make progress. Our low-income students are currently at 47 PPI. So that's an area that we really want to target at the elementary school, from grades three to five. Okay, click on the next section. So this is our students with disabilities at the Arthur T. Cummings School. This is another extremely important step group. You can see that our students with disabilities, something that really jumped out at me here, our students with disabilities are still in the blue. So when we're saying, okay, our, our students with disabilities are struggling in a lot of different areas, but one area that they really do well in is science in fifth grade. So what are we doing with those students in science in fifth grade? Well, they're included in all of their classrooms. So this is a time when we really are functioning with a full inclusion model, and our students are rising to the occasion and really progressing. So that's something that uh, we'll talk about a little bit more in further detail. But you can see in our other categories, in 2014, we either stayed the same or we improved below target. So students at the middle school, this, is, this represents students in grades six through eight. Students at the middle school, about the same. So you're seeing that we uh, that we stay either stay the same or we increase below target. We were able to earn some extra credit points. Our percentage of students decreased in the warning category for math, which is uh, tremendous progress. 
And that has a lot to do, once again, with a lot of the hard work that our teachers are doing in the classrooms. Our low income students at the middle school level, so grades six through eight, you'll see that the PPI for these students is at 70. So like I talked about before, we want that PPI to be at, at least at 75. So our students at the middle school rating, uh, ranging six through eight are achieving at a higher rate in the low income category than our students in three through five. So what's really nice about this is now that we're merging four through seven, you'll see that we have a little bit balance. Our students with disabilities do better at the elementary school. Our students in low income do better at the middle school level. So now that we're going to be aligning our school four through seven, hopefully we'll be able to share a lot of those resources and balance out our strengths. Our students with disabilities at the middle school, you can see that the CPI is in the red. That's an area that we really want to target and work on this year. And, um, our, and we're improving below, <coughs> below target in math. So significant findings based on this data and additional data that we took a look at. The CR50 Cummings in middle school both remain rated as level two schools. The R50 Cummings school is rated in the 31st percentile and the middle school was rated in the 38th percentile. So when you look at those percentiles, they're not great. They're not where we want them to be. But the 31st percentile, the Arthur T. Cummings School was a level three school in 2010. And according to DSAC, the department, um, the district school assistance center, we were in about the 20, 21st percentile in 2010. So we were able to jump about 10 percentile points in the last three years, which once again is due to the, the tremendous work by our teachers. Also significant findings, the greatest area of growth for the coming school was in science. You can see that was represented by our reaching above, improving above our targets, which is, which is a great sign. In science, students demonstrated above target performance in each subgroup, with the exception of low income students. Other significant findings, our EOL students are doing very well. They exhibited strong growth with an SGP of 61% in ELA and 52% in math. Grade three ELL students increased their proficiency levels from 15% in 2013 to 41% in 2014. That is a tremendous increase. Also non-high need students in fourth grade exhibited an SGP of 59%. Like I said before, between 40 and 60 is about average growth. Anything above 60 is considered high growth. So our students, our ELL students are, are at 59%. When you look at our students with disabilities in seventh grade, they have an SGP of 63%. So there are some really positive things that are happening. All students in eighth grade showed a strong SGP of 68.5% in math, and non-disabled students showed an SGP of 73%. Hispanic Latino students showed an SGP of 74.5% in ELA across all grade levels at the middle school. The cumulative mathematics results for all students at the common school increased in the proficient advanced category from 53 to 56 percent. So now we really need to talk about some areas that we're targeting for growth because we know that we can do better and we know that we want to be a level one school. So the areas that we're targeting for growth, right now the biggest thing that jumps out at us is math. So you can look at this right now and you can tell that we have too much pink and too much red. Also, if you look here in six through eight, once again, needs improvement is pink, red is warning of failure. We have too much pink and too much red. When we look at our state comparison data, if you look at the state, how the state did in grade four, they had about 20% advanced in grade four. The R3 T comments had about 21%. The proficient category, the state was at 32. Grade four, we were about 28. Needs improvement, 36 for the state and 43% for grade four. So that really tells us that we need to move these students into this category and we really want to bump up our advance as well. If you look at grade seven data, the state had about 17% in the advanced category and WMS had about 13%. The proficient category, you can see that the state had 33 and we had 25. Needs improvement, the state had 26 and we had 35. 
and the warning category, the state had 24 and we have 28. So this was one thing that really stood out for me when we went and, and analyzed the data. This is our performance of our special education students, and this is just taking into account one grade. So we just looked at, uh, you know, this is pretty consistent across grade levels, but this represents our grade six special education students. And you can see right there that 78% of our students are in the warning and failure category. So that's an area that we, we cannot let um, go on from year to year. So when we look at math in grade six as well, we can see that <coughs> students with disabilities, 78% in the warning or failure category, and we have 49% in the state category. So that, those are huge red flags for us that we need to be targeting. And we have some, some actions and initiatives that we be put into place that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, growth comparisons. This is a nice chart because it shows on the left, you'll see the proficient along, and you'll see the median SGP right here. The yellowish brown dot represents our non-disabled students at the ATC, NELA. And the X right here represents state performance. So you can see that our non-disabled students are right in line with where the state's performing. This black dot is our disabled students at the coming school. And this blue X right here is the state for disabled students. So you can see that our proficient categories are, are below the state. This is the same chart for low-income students. This is at the middle school level, the same chart for ELA. And same chart for math. This represent our, represents our low-income students at the middle school. So now what are we going to do about it? So that's, uh, you know, we've identified the areas that we need to improve. We've identified some things that we really want to work on. So what we've done this year is at the ATC, we've added additional inclusion classes for fourth and fifth grade. When we go back and we look at our science data, right there that tells us that when our students are included and our students are given the opportunity to be challenged uh, with, the, with the rigorous curriculum and the supports that they need to be successful, that they do achieve at a high level. We are doing targeted intervention based on data. So the scholastic reading inventory, dibbles, and other various literacy assessments are being implemented as we speak. Um, we, we progress monitor students. We have students in response to intervention models for grades four, five, six, and seven. We have meaningful professional development <coughs> that is scheduled for this year. We're looking at a model called the responsive classroom, which has a research base of improving scores for low-income students. And we also are looking at a writer's workshop model for improving our writing. One area that we saw when we looked at data was that our writing can really be improved in a lot of different areas. Our open response, our short answer questions, but those are areas that really um, transcend across different subjects and that's something that we can improve with some focus on PD and writing. Uh, also, our integration of technology. We've had some teachers that have had phenomenal success with integrating technology in the classroom, mm -hmm. using programs like Khan Academy, Think Central, and 10 Marks, they've been able to demonstrate some terrific growth. We have, uh, we've gone from having about 25 computers in our school, now we have about 75. So we're able to, you know, by tripling the amount of computers we have, we're able to uh, really provide our students with um, some technology that has been proven to increase their performance. The teachers have been very eager to learn about this technology. They've been utilizing this technology consistently. We have online calendars where they can go on and sign up to reserve the Chromebook carts that we have. And those calendars, as soon as we posted them online, were filled up by the teachers. So that tells us right away that teachers are ready to embrace the technology. They're ready to learn how to use the technology. They just want more of it. So it's, it's becoming this resource that is, is uh, scarce and something that we really need to make sure we have available for our teachers. Some other action steps at the ATC, uh, targeted math intervention. So something that we've done, we've had a lot of success with our RTI model in ELA. We're going to roll out an RTI model in mathematics. 
We've um, already integrated <coughs> additional support personnel into classrooms during their mathematics block to provide additional supports and break down the classes into small group formats so that students can get the help they need based on the level that they're at. And also to ensure that all of our students are being challenged in our classrooms from our highest performing students to our students that need a little bit of remediation. Um, we have a STEM specialist this year, which is a fantastic addition. Our STEM specialist is providing hands-on curriculum um, in, a, in our classrooms on a daily basis. Our teachers can sign up to have the STEM specialists come into their classroom. What we were hearing from our teachers is they want to do a lot of hands-on activities. They, they really want to do a lot more labs. They want to do a lot more science that's hands-on and helps the kids really engage and builds that high level of engagement. But the problem that they were having is the transition times in between their classes. It made it very difficult for them to do all the setup and all the breakdown. So our STEM specialist travels to the different classrooms and she's able to go into the classroom and set up all of the materials and make sure that those teachers can have the tools and the resources that they need, break it down, and also have two teachers available to help the students with the, on, or with the hands-on learning activities. So that's been a huge bonus. Um, we, do, we do have a teacher in the room that utilizes that um, extensively. We also, uh, we also need to increase our parent engagement. That's something that uh, Mr. Curley and I talk about all the time, and the teachers and I talk about all the time. We really need to provide our parents with tools and resources if they want to be working with their children more at home on specific skills. We need to be talking with our parents about, okay, here's some programs that you, you can use. Here's a curriculum, curriculum that we're using in our classrooms. Here's how you can access this. If we have tutors that are working with the children, we need to make sure that we have online um, websites and links that they can go on there and get materials right away. So that's something that we're working on. Action steps for our grade six and seven students. We've made a, pretty, a couple of pretty big adjustments to our schedule this year in grades six and seven. When we looked at our performance for all students, uh, Mr. Curley, could you click all the way back to the uh, overall scores for the middle school? Uh, you know, you can keep, actually. Right here? Yeah, right there. Okay. Um, So we put, we put forward to the other, the other side. Keep going. Right, keep going to math. Keep going to math. Sorry, for math, students with disabilities is one more. That's it. One more. We have uh, the graph breakdown at the uh, grade six students. Oh, yeah, that's the one. One more, one more for Sorry about that. Yep. But this slide really tells us a lot. Because if you look at 2011, you can see our, our from 2011 to 2012, our students with disabilities went from 43% to 81%. So when you see something like that, that's a question you really want to ask. What, what was the change? How come our number almost doubled from 2011 to 2012? And what happened in 2011 is we had the implementation of new curriculum frameworks. And so what that tells us as administrators is, was there a resource that was provided to those teachers in 2012 so that they could meet the needs and the change in curriculum? And when we dug a little deeper, we found out that our teachers were working extremely hard, but the curriculum resource that they had was not aligned to the Common Core and was not aligned to the Massachusetts frameworks. So this year, you could you go back to action steps. This year, uh, one more. So this year we have um, curriculum textbooks that have been aligned to the Common Core to the Common Core for Grade Six. So the goal math that we have all the way up to Grade Five is now in Grade Six, and we're working on having it in Grade Seven. So I think that'll make um, a huge addition to our grade. So our ice block in Grade Six and Seven. When I talk about how we changed the schedule, initially last year we had something called Focus Block, and Focus Block was about. 50 minutes of time where the teachers had the opportunity to kind of work on you know, whatever they wanted to work to enrich their curriculum. So if they had ELA focus block, they could work on additional ELA skills. If they had science focus block, they could work on additional science skills. It was really a loose, loosely framed uh, big block of time. 
And so what we did this year is we really structured that time. And we created something called ICE Block. ICE Block stands for Intervention, Challenge, and Exploration. So what we did is we looked at all of our students, we looked at their MCAS data, we looked at their SRI data, which is their literacy data, and we said, how can we help these students? And so we took any students that were in the, the needs improvement or warning category for MCAS and math or ELA, and we also looked at the students that were reading below average, and we put those students in intervention groups. So our students right now are getting direct, explicit intervention in math and ELA if they, are, if they need it. So for 45 minutes a day, if you need literacy intervention, you go to a small group with about five to seven students. In that small group, you've been grouped by your data. So if you need help in comprehension, or you need help in fluency, you are with students that are reading at the exact same level as you, and they need work on the exact same skill. So that allows us to provide targeted, direct, explicit instruction to those students. If you're reading at grade level, or you're reading above grade level, grade level but you're struggling in math, then you go into one of our Khan Academy programs. So in grades six and seven, <coughs> if you need help, we have three teachers that are teaching Khan Academy. One in sixth grade, two in seventh grade. That accounts for about over 50 students that are receiving direct explicit math instruction right now on Khan Academy. And uh, close to 75 to 80 students in each grade that are getting help with math, um, with uh, literacy. So when we talk about professional development, I mentioned a little earlier that we have these, this new technology, we have these new resources, and we have teachers that are eager to use those resources. We have to be able to provide the training to our teachers to make sure that they can hit the ground running and feel comfortable with those resources. And so our next professional development day on November 4th, we actually polled all the teachers to get their feedback on what sort of professional development they would like help in. Would they like help in technology? Would they like help in providing accommodations with students with disabilities? Would they like help in uh, MCAS math? Whatever, whatever their feedback was, we looked at it and we designed individual PD groups that they'll go to in stations on their next PD day. So we're hoping that that will really uh, benefit the teachers. In extended instructional time in core areas, we were able to extend the instructional time from 52 minutes to 60 minutes in the majority of our classes at the middle school level. Monthly math assessments. We're going to be doing monthly math assessments tied to the standards, and we're going to be checking in with our students to make sure that they're uh, pro progressing where we need them to progress before we take the interest. Also, improved resource materials. I talked about that, the Go Math textbooks. Um, writing workshops. We're partnering with the Five District Partnership. They're bringing in a consulting company called Write Boston that has shown to increase ELA performance by about 35%. And we're going to be allowing our, you know, providing our teachers with the opportunity to go to these workshops if they, if they find that that would be something that's beneficial for them. So technology improvements, more access to technology. We have additional smart projectors that have been installed. Uh, 16 additional smart projectors installed in our classrooms, which will make a very positive impact. And we also have additional inclusion classes in grade six. So that's, that's my conclusion. We have many new and exciting initiatives. With additional support, we feel that our teachers will be able to make tremendous progress. Teacher support and increased focus on technology upgrades and access is, needs to be our significant area of focus. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions from the school committee? Yes, sir. I think it's more of a general comment. Is it possible that we could come in you know, on a periodic basis just to follow up on the action plans that, that are put in place just to see if, the, if you see some level of improvement and then if there's more resources that are needed you can come back to us and tell us what you need Absolutely. so if you see something that's that's just not making it yep. that we have the ability to, to, to help you while we can absolutely so maybe we can make that part of that the uh, academic maybe quarterly or something, just to kind of follow up and make sure that everything's uh, going the way it's supposed to go. And anything you need, just kind of give us a list and, and hit us with it so that we know that, that's what you need terrific. for success. I, you know? I know our teachers would really appreciate that as well. I know they're already generating their list in their heads right now. Stuff that <laughs> <laughs> we could need, and I, I could list off some things right now that I think that would be beneficial. But thank you. Go right ahead. <laughs> computers. We need more, we need more computers. Um, we, have, we have the Chromebooks. Uh, we had a donation of about $10,000 and we purchased 29 Chromebooks. Um, so we had another cart with 24 Chromebooks on it. 
if we could get two to three more carts, I think that would make, you know, if we could have one per grade level, I could see that as having a very positive impact on our students. I just want to add in on that. I met with uh, a fourth grade teacher last uh, two weeks ago, Ms. Luteri, who did quite a bit of what Mr. Harity was talking about with Khan Academy 10 point uh, and worked continuously last year with her students in grade four. And you see the overall growth. And she was so excited about the fact that it's working. You know, this is what's working. If we can keep going, each student is being individually challenged. I'm able to stay focused on that. And she said, the issue now is, is that we're, we're expanding that out to everybody, and everybody's excited because we're seeing things that are working, but we need more, um, technically, more computers. So we did get them more. I am working currently uh, to try to get another set of Chromebooks. Uh, one of the things I will tell you is that I'm working with the 5DP that we've applied for a technology grant as a group, each district applying for 100000 a piece out of that grant because we can already show that we've matched it by the purchase of the iPads, which is good. And we would like that because that's the stuff that we're seeing is happening. So I, I hear what he's saying, and we are, we are working towards trying to increase to at least have, our goal would be to have two per grade level, uh, or two on the floor, or two per grade level of carts for that, um, for the coming school. This one. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Hi. I was thinking a lot recently, and then as you were talking about balancing time and focusing on areas, and how, is there enough time in the day to do it? And then at the end, you had mentioned that you had extended instructional time for some classes. Yeah. Is, is, where is that time coming from, and is there something else that's being lost as you're, in, as you're increasing time in other areas, or how can we help you build more time into your day or find more time to spend with the kids? Yeah, so in our day, basically, we, our focus block was 50 minutes, so we shortened that, we shortened that focus block, or it was 52 minutes, we shortened, actually, what was it, actually, it was 60 minutes, right? So it was 60 minutes, so we shortened that by 15 minutes, so our, our ice block this year is 45 minutes, and so during, during that time, students take, you know, a lot of different types of enrichment classes, so our students that, you know, have, uh, that need remediation or need additional help get that, our students that don't, take classes like creative and critical thinking, uh, Japanese history, they take uh, personal finance, we have students in journalism, so we have a, a variety of other classes that we're adding. Um, that's, that will allow us to really, you know, to do that. And just to follow up with that, is, um, are you, have you felt an impact with class size at all or difficulties with, with that? Um, you know, we've added, we've added a lot of students to the school, but you really wouldn't know it. Um, other than when the seventh graders and the fourth graders are in the hallway at the same time, and it, you know, it's, it, they look like giants. Um, other than that, you know, the building has such a great flow to it that we're able to really make <coughs> work. And we designed the schedule. Actually, uh, Mr. Rowan, who's our music teacher, is, has some significant skills with designing schedules. And he really helped us out last year. And the way that the schedule was designed, and the way that the times, you know, the seventh grade and the fourth grade and the fifth, you know, fifth grade and sixth grade, they're rarely in the hallways at the same time. So it allows us to have a really nice flow to the building. Our class sizes are about 24 students per class. Um, they've been higher in the past. They've been, I mean, I think I could ask the lines. They, they've told me days where they've had 28 to, you know, 30 students in a classroom. So I think. Um, our class sizes right now are okay. Obviously, if they were lower, they would be better. But you know, I think we're we're doing pretty well right now. Thanks, Mr. Harry. You've been the principal for only a few months, so yeah, I think any criticism directed in you, at you needs to be tempered somewhat. However, next year that won't be the case. <laughs> yeah, and uh, some of these scores are they're bad. And I'm very pleased to see that you brought an action plan with you this evening. And I agree with Vice Chairman Perrin completely that I, I too, as he said, I too would like to see you come back to let us know how those items are coming along, how those issues are developing, and what we can do to help you. Uh, you know, we have, we have a budget. We have to spend it on what we need. 
Yeah. And um, so there's, there's, there's limited resources there. But we can't redirect or set next year's budget without you telling us what you need. Absolutely. And um, so over the next year, please do let us know what you need because we all need to get these scores better yeah. um, than they are now. I have, I have another question. Yes, sir. Um, the word disabilities, as it applied to a group of students, yeah. could you define what that means? Who is in such a category? What is, is it everybody who's on an IEP? Yep, so a student with disability is a student that's on an individual education program plan, so that would be any student on an IEP. Which is quite a broad group of children. It is, it is a very broad group of children, and you know, the thing that we really need to remember when we talk about students with disabilities, and I was a little hesitant, when, to be honest, I was a little hesitant to, to present some of this data, because you know, being a special education teacher and you know, going through a special education program and which I have a master's degree and that was something that to me what I really don't want to happen is our special education students you know any sort of blame gets put on these students because it's you know it's not our special education students that <coughs> are bringing our scores down because they're not bringing our scores down at all it's just our students in comparison to other special education students throughout the state aren't doing as well as they can and so we need to really the reason that I decided to, to share that data is because it's not a huge group of students and it's something that's really manageable and it's something that we can really make a tremendous impact if we really target our instruction and provide these students with what they need and so for me it's something that's that's really exciting because we can really target our data and, and really identify those students and make sure that we're monitoring them and following up on them and and really engaging with their parents and getting them all the support that they need and we've seen in science that you know when we get them in those classrooms and we get them you know, with peer role models and we get them to succeed, that they can achieve at the same level as anybody else. And so that's something that, that I really want to make sure that everybody's clear on. You feel comfortable with your action plan that you'll be able to make these significant improvements, apparently. You seem excited about it. I am. I mean, I'm, I'm really passionate about it. Uh, you know, uh, Mike and Bernadette can tell you that last year, you know, I, I was looking at the schedule and I was really frustrated a lot of the time because I felt that there was some downtime in there and our students weren't getting what they needed. And so we really worked with the special education teachers and we really worked with the special education chair in our building <laughs> to, to change a lot of IEPs and to try to make sure that we were, you know, doing what we needed to do. But it's gonna be a lot of hard work and, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, uh, you know, Mr. Curley is phenomenal. I think together and with our teachers we can do it. Thank you. I spoke to uh, Superintendent Macero and we were hoping maybe that in January it could be on the agenda so that we can just track the progress of the Absolutely. action plan and you can put together whatever uh, needs that you see or whatever we're lacking so that you're, uh, we can support you in your uh, action plan. And if it needs to change, it changes. So That, that sounds great. Sometime in January we can put that on the agenda. Mm -hmm. and I, could, I could even give you some data too because we'll have some data as far as, you know, how our students are doing with their literacy levels, being in the targeted intervention, how they're doing with their math, and you know, really seeing if they're making the progress that we need to see. Excellent. You can you can put as many things on your action plan as you can think of, but if yeah. you don't have the support and the tools to follow through. Yeah. And that's what the January date is. It's not yeah. to say, is it fixed? Yeah. It's you know, yeah. where are we in the plan and, and what do you need to make that plan work? You have a sympathetic audience here. Use us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ms. Holden. Um, I'm not sure if I, if this is a good question for you, Mr. Macero, but have we um, done the staff education for the bullying program yet, or is that in the next? <coughs> we work, we've, the we've started it in some areas, in uh, some particular buildings, but we haven't uh, begun it yet at the high school level, only because we're trying to get all the other PD in with the... Um, Right. There was that, that program that we had yeah, agreed on. And yeah, right, I didn't right. know if that was coming in November. Or so we're working on that to, to happen. I, could, I can comment on that too yes. because um, the last week of October we're doing an anti-bullying awareness week 
and we're implementing a lot of the second step. Second step is a program that we had talked about making sure we had, we had had the program, mm -hmm. but we just were not implementing it with fidelity. So uh, we're rolling out a week of anti-bullying awareness activities, and second step is is our resource for providing a lot of those mm -hmm. activities that week, and then we'll continue to do that on a monthly basis, where one you know once per month we'll have a lesson that we're doing in our classroom around in our homerooms around anti-bullying and, and how students can, uh, you know, making sure students are aware of all the definitions and how they report things and, and make sure teachers are aware <coughs> of it. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Terry, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carley. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is the Superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, thank the Arthur T. Cummings uh, administration uh, for their wonderful report tonight and really breaking down the details for us uh, so that you could see exactly what our needs are and where we're moving forward. And I also appreciate the school committee being sympathetic to our needs as we move forward and uh, trying to give our students what we can. Um, first thing I did want to clarify, and I know that the uh, newspaper reporter is here tonight, I just wanted to uh, make sure that I let her know that I appreciated the great fact that the William P. Gorman Fort Banks was declared a level one, however, they haven't tested yet. So they're just, um, they're what they call non-applicable until next year. It's that they have third graders now there, and so next year they'll be rated on that. So I, I wanted to make sure that the community didn't think that the, the William P. Gorman was at that status of level one, because right now it's not there yet. That is, um, it's just that they've never been um, given a status because they never had third grade. So I don't know if there was a confusion on that, but I wanted to clarify that publicly um, tonight. Um, in regards to the Winthrop High School, this past week we held a high school college fair that had over 100 students and parents participating in. The first part of the fair was uh, in regards to tuition, um, scholarships and financial aid and all of that, which I found was that the person who spoke, I was told, was very uh, good. They brought it down to layman's terms. Parents seemed to have a good understanding of how the funding works and how to apply for uh, financial aid. And then we had 25 colleges or universities here uh, and students were able, students and parents were able to go to the tables and talk to uh, colleges and get paraphernalia from them and give it a little introduction, which, it, which was great. We hadn't had that opportunity for a long time and I was glad to see that. We also had every sophomore and junior last week took the PSATs. Uh, that's uh, in you know you may recall years ago when we took the PSATs you took them on a Saturday morning and it was only those who chose to take them or could afford to take them now the school uh, purchases and pays for every child in the sophomore and junior year to take the, the PSATs um, so we will um, we'll hear back from that at some point how our students did uh, and that is in preparation as SATs and now are currently starting to happen for most likely seniors who want to take SATs again uh, for their college uh, applications and that will be um, happening. Also at the high school this past week our girls volleyball team uh, made it to the tournament with their win over St. Mary's. Uh, they're in their third year of their program and we're very excited for them to have acknowledged that they've moved on to the uh, tournament, which will begin, I believe, next Thursday. Uh, they will uh, begin. I'm not sure if we'll be home or we're away. We'll, we'll find out all of that information. Tonight I was watching them in their beat revere, so it was kind of a good <laughs> thing. Uh, as well as our high school football team is still undefeated. Uh, they're 6-0. and They beat Classical last weekend. This Friday night they will be playing at Danvers. The winner will be, uh, if if we win, we will be the sole conference champion of the Northeast Conference Small Division. If we were not to win, we would share that conference championship with the team Danvers that we're playing. So we would like to be a little selfish here and not have to share that at all. Um, we are playing in a playoff game a week 
from Friday. Uh, and this, it looks to be right now that we will be home, but we will um, we'll see how that all unravels after <coughs> this week. Um, the Arthur T. Cummings had recent elections, and I'd like to congratulate those. Uh, they had student council elections at the Arthur T. Cummings School. Uh, grade four representatives were Madison Stiglitz, Andrew uh, Dagnot, Jack Hayes, Joel Johnson, Abby Holmes, and Julia Holmes. Grade five representatives, Emily Rodriguez, Sean Montgomery, Christopher Gibbons, Ty Kalinda, Mia Martucci, and Maggie Zog Zogazi. Uh, sixth grade, uh, they follow more in the tradition of a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Your president is Bobby Hubert, vice president John Mangoni, secretary Rachel Farley, treasurer Grace Galores. And seventh grade, the president Noah Evangelista, vice president Ryan Parker, secretary Michael Chavez, and treasurer De Devin Barry. I'd like to congratulate those students on their campaign. I'd also like to congratulate all the students who ran and uh, for office I know that they had put together uh, it was great I saw pictures coming in from Mr. Herity of the different slogans that they had up on the walls and it's really important that our students learn how voting and, and, and government student government work and last year we incorporated the student government into our selection process um, with us in regards to the uh, new principal and so uh, Mr. Harry, that was probably your toughest battle of that one, wasn't it? Really it really was, yeah. <laughs> yes. So I came prepared. <laughs> and they were ready for you when you came back. Um, so we're very happy about that. The, um, as I mentioned earlier in the five district partnership, we are applying for a uh, tech grant. And so we're hopeful. We believe that as a group, we have a better power because we could also have a better buying power. Um, the 5DP is uh, we're, we're, we're moving forward on a lot of avenues and um, at some point one of the things not in the, the November 3rd meeting we have Miss Pearson who will be presenting on grade 3 MCAS uh, and as well as their action steps for grade 3 but one of the meetings either November 17th or in December I'd like to do a presentation on the five district partnership bring in our executive director so you can see all of the wonderful work that is going on full winter as part of this group, so um, under the academics as well. There is a free field trip for the coming students this Saturday um, to Spectacle Island on Saturday, October 25th from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. for students in grades 6 and 7 uh, for the Arthur T. Cummings. I know that um, that's Miss Armistead, I believe. Uh, sponsored office. by the Winter Police. Right, sponsored by the Winter Police Department. Do you want to just say a couple of words on that, just so that? Yeah, Detective Armistead it. had uh, had come to me and and said, you know, we'd really like to do Police Department would really like to sponsor a field trip and you know make sure that we're really building strong ties with the students <coughs> at a young age and make sure that they feel always come come into us and you know comfortable coming to us. And so uh, I'm going to be going as well. We're going to be going next Saturday and going out to Spectacle Island and having some fun, so. Well, and I think it's, what, what's nice is that we're, that partnership of the resource officer and coming into the schools <coughs> and that partnership of, of police with our students, this is, this is a great opportunity and I'm, I'm very happy to see it come to life. Uh, and I want to give special thanks to Detective Armistead who brought it to my attention. Uh, about a month ago and said what do you think and I said okay well let's see how would we be able to do this I, I said the kids have to be back by a certain time because of the buses and she said Mr. Mister, it's for Saturday <laughs> I went for Saturday well then by all means not a problem that works out even better so that's the type of stuff that we like to see uh, so the um, they do have uh, the they're going to have their first yearbook and chorus meetings have taken place at the ATC, and this is going to be their first time they're going to have an after-school chorus. So we're excited about that as well. Uh, so there's lots of stuff, and as he talked about earlier, we had the smart projectors uh, were, were put into the classrooms, and um, so we're moving in on that. And then, of course, uh, I believe, I'm, oh, my final on the school update, we have completed the peer uh, Geo Peers drilling, 
So the good news is, is that there shouldn't be any more drilling over in that area now. And now they are beginning the, it's always amazing how it, see I got rid of the sound tonight so we wouldn't have to hear it. Um, we are now beginning the foundation. So the foundation should be laid by December 31st and then you will start to see. So what you'll see now as you drive by a lot, you'll see a lot of, um, uh, you, you can see that they framed it up. We're about 15 feet high, or we're actually at, sorry, 14 feet, and then the foundation of the ground will bring it to 15 feet, 15.2, when they lay the cement and all that. So that's going to be the first um, level of the construction. And then after that, so afterwards, then you'll start to see things start to go up, which is the steel will start in January through April. So we're well, we're well on our way um, of this project. O October ends a week from Friday, which means we're now down to 20 months. Mm -hmm. So each month goes away, and I say another month passes, and we're getting closer and closer to this project, which is when you think about it, a year ago, at this time, we weren't even sure we were going to have this project. And so a year from the election day, within the year, we'll have already be laying the foundation down on this project, which I, I think goes out to show you how great the School Building Assistance Committee has been working on this project, as well as I have to give kudos right now to Gilbane, Skanska, and HMFH for their great work that they're doing. Um, I want to remind everybody to watch, or please feel free to come all our school building assistance committee meetings, whether they're subcommittees, which the construction subcommittee is the hot subcommittee right now with all of the uh, issues that are going on with the building, those are open to the public. So um, if you have any questions on when they are, you can see them on the website, or you can certainly check with town hall, uh, the town clerk's office, and they will let you know when those are posted. That's all I have. Thank you. Questions for the superintendent? No, we can go right to personnel. Are there any personnel issues? This? All I have on personnel is people that we've brought on board um, from the last time that we met. We had Christina Deeb, who is an ESP at the Arthur T. Cummings. Uh, Benjamin Costaval is a, a new bus driver that we're going to have for uh, special act, uh, field trips and um, act, uh, after school events. So it's good. We're happy. We have three bus drivers now. We feel that's, that's a good move in the right direction of areas that we need. Uh, France St. Fleur is a school bus monitor. And um, my recent last hire for the part-time office aide at the central office, uh, you may recognize this name, Mary Lou Osborne, hmm. is now uh, part of the staff. And I couldn't think of anybody better than to put over there who is very dedicated in her work ethics and understands our business very well and knows what needs to happen. So we're excited to have her join as we are everybody who joins us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Next item is the warrant. We have a warrant this evening. SVW 15-6, the amount of $296,286.03. Motion by President Gill. Second. Second by Ms. Sullivan. Are there any questions or comments on the warrant? We shall vote. All in favor of passing the warrant, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Next is the payroll warrant dated September 10th, 2014, in the amount of 555, I'm sorry, I'm going to say that again, $557,457.25. Motion. Motion by Vice Chairman. Karen, second by President Kill. Any questions on the payroll warrant? We'll vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, buildings and grounds. You give me just one second, please. We have um, a policy in the school committee now that because we have had some <coughs> problems in the past getting payment once uh, buildings have been used, uh, we now require that a check come with the request. Uh, and that policy applies to everyone. 
the issue we need to deal with tonight is that the town of Winthrop is legally not able to do that. Uh, the laws of the Commonwealth prohibit a municipality from presenting a check with their request. They can, however, present a purchase order. How am I doing so far, Mr. Gordon? Everything's good so far. Okay. Um, and so I think what we need to do in the long term is to make sure our policy reads so that we are able to accept purchase orders from town departments. All others, paycheck. Um, that's the long term. In the short term, uh, we do have a request from Parks and Recs uh, to use school facilities. And as I said, they Plus cannot sure. follow the policy and give us a check. They can give us a purchase order, however. Um, and so I would like to ask the committee if for the next, this is October, perhaps um, I would ask the committee, not perhaps, I will ask the committee in a motion to allow the town of Winthrop for the remainder of 2014 to uh, reserve space in the schools with a purchase order. That would be, that will require a 75% vote of this committee tonight to do that because it would be an override of our policy. And I ask for that to be for the remainder of the calendar year so that we have time to change our policy so that from then on, um, a purchase order will just be part of the policy. Um, when you say calendar year, are you talking calendar year through December of 2014 or through the school year? Not the academic year, the okay, calendar year. thank you. If I give the policy subcommittee until next June to do it, they will get it done on June 30th. <laughs> we will get it. I should say we. I'm on the policy subcommittee. Um, so I'll try to put a shorter deadline on That's that fine. for the end of the calendar year, 2014. Motion to allow purchase orders through December 31st for the reserve building for the town. Second. Motion by President Gill, second by Vice Chairman Perrin. For discussion. Uh, Sir. Would that also include student organizations where you have, uh, like we had the, uh, I forget what class came in for uh, that show that we were going to present where uh, they didn't have a check in hand. Is that something that's also going to be allowed? I'm just thinking the internal thing, the uh, students' organizations. A lot of times they don't have the uh, check in hand. This would only be for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. of the town of Winthrop. Mm -hmm. Do I have to address that at the policy side? Yes. yes. Any other questions or comments? Again, we need a 75% vote to override this for the remainder of the calendar year. Just for my own information, yes. the, uh, so we couldn't now uh, vote to change the policy. It has to come through the policy subcommittee. I would recommend it so that we could write the policy, and then yep. we would need to bring it for a first reading and a second reading, and then yep. a vote to change the policy itself. Uh, I'm definitely in favor of allowing um, town departments to pay to provide a purchase order at the time of the request. I think there's so much. Um, there's a few levels to go through to have somebody write a check out and I know that the, the town's not going to write a check for a request so if that would allow the, the students and the children and the community to use our buildings uh, that that's a fair way to go so I, I would be voting yes on that well I, I should say just for town I know just for I know that's what I was saying for town departments to provide a PO at request if, if we do not pass this by 75%, then basically the, the town of Winthrop will not be able to use any school facilities because they won't be able to pay for them according to our policy, right. and therefore they can't use them. So if you do feel that the town should be able to use school facilities, and I do, certainly, I will be voting yes. Then, then I urge you to vote yes. On I this. think we'd be hard pressed to not vote yes when we uh, violate the law. <laughs> well, we wouldn't violate the law. We just would not allow them to use our facilities. Yes. That would be in keeping with the law. <coughs> oh, 
Okay. Motion. Motion. Question. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions, discussions? Ms. Hames, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Mr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Sullivan? Yes. Ms. Polino? Yes. Mr. Perrin? Yes. Mr. Scromro? Yes. Thank you. Next is the use of buildings. We have four requests, one from the Arthur T. Cummings PTO, the boys basketball, and two from Parks and Recs. And now that we have voted to allow Parks and Recs to pay with the purchase order, I'll make a motion that we approve all four requests with one vote. Second. Second by President Gill. Any questions or discussions? Yep. Sorry. Yes, sir. Can you just add on the on the parks and rec? Can you just add in your motion that pending they give us a purchase order that you'll approve it? Uh, we don't have a purchase order yet. Right, because we didn't we didn't get the purchase order yet because we didn't know if the policy was going to approve. But I just would like I would request that you put it in there pending the purchase order that it will be approved. I think we will need to do that if they're going to use it because they one of them starts on November 7th. Right, right. So, I mean, we'll, we, I would imagine we can get a purchase order tomorrow. Yeah. That won't be the issue, but I just want to make sure that they know that that's the case on your, to protect yes. what you just voted to. Very good. Then that would be part of the motion that pending the purchase order. Mm -hmm. Right, for the parks and rec. The others you have the checks yes. and you can take it all in one. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Next is mandatory background checks. I think we're still working we're on still working. still working on that. Uh, next we did is meet, just so everybody knows. We did meet, we, but we're at another. Yes. All right. We continue to make progress. We do. <laughs> we're not quite at the end yet. Next is the short collaborative. Uh, you all have seen the um, the articles of agreement from Shore Collaborative. Uh, they have changed slightly, and we have a summary sheet that we all got um, stating what those changes are. Um, and if the town of Winthrop wishes to remain a part of the Shore Collaborative, then uh, we need to accept the articles of agreement as they now are. And I will need to, I need to have the committee's permission to, um, to sign the agreement that we accept these articles. And so I would very much appreciate it if the uh, committee would approve uh, the articles as they have been changed and uh, make a motion that we accept the articles and authorize the chairperson to um, sign the acceptance of the changes. Second by Mr. Perrin. Any questions? Uh, mm -hmm. okay, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Recommendations for component yourself? Or I have or read through, I have read the, the summary, I have read the agreement. Um, I think that we should uh, agree to the articles and continue as a member of the Shaw Collaborative. Thank you. I would concur. Thank you. Uh, we will vote now. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Next item is the class of 2017 fundraiser iPad screen protectors. Great fundraiser. Anybody wish to speak on this? I can read the proposal if you would, sir. So, the class of 2017 fundraiser, the Winter High School class of 2017 would like to sell screen protectors for our new school iPads we just received. We would like to start selling this project, a product as soon as this proposal gets approved. We would like to sell them for $5 at all four lunches. All the money raised will go towards the class of 2017. We believe that this is a fundraiser would be a great asset to our grade this year and beneficial to all the students. So this is a project by the class, so it would be the class advisors who are um, 
organizing this 2017 class is our current sophomores. sophomores. So, and for those we do on the iPad, it would be additional people, kids could buy additional screen protectors as you see. They can get pretty much marked up a lot and sometimes very quickly look like that, right? So, okay. is there a motion? Motion. Motion by President Gill, second by Ms. Sullivan. Any questions or comments? We'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Public comment? Public relations? Mr. Superintendent. We have two items here that were in the packet. I don't know if anybody was going to, but there is the Winthrop High School Class of 2016 Annual Country Fair, which will be held on Thursday evening, November 13th. That's at the St. John's the Evangelist School Hall. I know that's a traditional event. People enjoy that. Um, and each year, it's always the junior class is the current class that handles that event. Um, it's from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, door prizes, split the pot, raffles, raffles, and more raffles. If you need any information, you can contact Karen Perrin or Kathy Norris. They are the folks who are the class advisors, and they'll be more than happy to uh, guide anybody there. And also the junior class, because I think last year as the sophomore class had a very successful Mike's Pastry event, Winthrop High School junior class is taking orders for Thanksgiving pies. And the difference this year is you can place your order by November 18th and pick up your pies on November 25th, but they will deliver your pies for an extra fee. <laughs> so if you want your pies delivered um, between 6 and 8 that night, you can for an additional $2 fee. So if you need uh, flyers for this, uh, just go to the high school. They'll have them at the high school. Uh, make any check payable to Winthrop High School. That's important. But this is a, another great um, event. I know last year I didn't. It, it saved me from having to pay. <laughs> That's all I have under public relations. Thank you. I just wanted to follow up on the uh, country fair. Uh, they're still accepting raffles, raffle donations. So you can get in touch with Karen Perrin, my wife, uh, or Kathy Norris. And there's a free turkey giveaway every half hour. So if uh, you want your turkey for Thanksgiving, uh, you might win one by going to this event. So again, they're uh, still soliciting for uh, donations for uh, raffles. It's a fundraiser that will go towards all the uh, senior activities for the class of 2016. Thank you. President Gill. I just wanted to comment on the uh, progress at the new high school. It's, uh, I'm very enthused about it. It seems like it's moving on schedule and it's going to open on time. Um, that's good news. And I give a great deal of credit to our school building assistance committee. Their efforts have been tireless and their accomplishments have been tremendous. And I, I want to recognize it's a very hard work to do. And I also, while I have the uh, floor, wanted to um, Recognize our school resource officer and the, the school resource officer program being a combined effort of the council and the, and the school department to, uh, to put that together. And I'm hearing wonderful things, including tonight's trip to spectacle, tonight's mention of the trip to spectacle island. So those are two things that we need to be happy about. Detective Armistead. Mr. Harrity, really you are on the, on the uh, stump now to get these scores. <laughs> 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 You'll be watching. Yeah. Excuse me. Miss right. Sullivan? I just wanted to thank everybody, especially uh, President Gill and Mr. Macero, for helping out with Walk to School Day a couple weeks ago. It ended up being a beautiful fall, sunny day. And a lot of families participated, so thank you for participating in that. Um, the Gorman Fort Banks PTO is sponsoring a paint night on November 7th. Um, you can get information on the Fort Banks PTO Facebook page um, or by contacting any of the officers. Um, it's Friday, November 7th. It's a lot of fun. And just want to wish the football team um, and Coach Driscoll a lot of luck in closing out the season on Friday with another win, undefeated, in Danvers, hopefully. So good luck to the players. Ms. Polino? No. Thank you. Well, sir. Well, we're thanking people. I want to thank my friend Karen Chavez for all the work that she does for the town of Winthrop. She sits on so many committees. She goes to so many meetings. She does so much work. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Appreciate it. Anything else this evening? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn from President Gill. Second. Second.
Second from Ms. Sullivan. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.